If God is a loving God, why wouldn't he be more understanding of our weakness? Don't you think he would cut us a little slack? We didn't ask to come into this world. I understand. And so far, God has been very patient with our sins since he created everything. When you ask people if they think they'll go to heaven, most will say they think their good behavior outweighs their bad. And that may be very true. But we're not judging ourselves on the day of judgment. God is judging us. He's judging us based on our own deeds and according to his standard. God is perfect and he is perfectly just. So there needs to be some payment for our sins for perfect justice. None of us are capable of paying. He's already stated that the soul that sins will die and the wages of sin is death. But the good news for you and me is that Jesus Christ, the word of God, became the perfect payment to God for the sins of all mankind. He lived a life without sin. So God himself paid the price for our sins with his son. And this was all foretold from the very beginning. Every book in the Bible before Jesus became a man has a prophetic reference about it. The profession of faith many of us say in church every week says, he died and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Many miraculous prophecies were fulfilled in the life of Jesus Christ. Check it out. The piece I will play to display this wonderful news brings us back to Johann Sebastian Bach. Part of his output is over 200 cantatas, a musical work comprised of four movements, most often consisting of a choir, four vocal soloists, and an instrumental ensemble. On some of those cantatas, Bach would write the letters JJ in his manuscript at the beginning for the Latin words Jesu Juva, Jesus Help or at the end, SDG, for solo Deo Gloria, glory to the only God, or glory to God alone. Bach loved and honored the Lord. One of his 200 cantatas is called Herz und Mund und Tat und Leben, or heart and mouth and deed and life in English. Part two of that cantata is called Jesu bleibet meine Freude, which means Jesus shall remain my joy. But it's now known in English as Jesus' Joy of Man's Desiring. It's now a very popular melody. I have made my own arrangement of it. You know, before I even put this program together, I composed it in the key of E major, even though Bach originally wrote it in G major. In the Rachmaninoff etude that I played before this, there's a point around two-thirds of the way through that arrives at E major really kind of a crux point in the piece. In the midst of judgment, what inexpressible joy to have Jesus in our hearts. Enjoy. <laughs> 